chapter 3. Mark chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm not going to get done with this, so I'll continue as Lord will next week. There's a phrase in this verse that I want to talk about, but notice in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, of course the things would be back like verses 1. It goes all the way back through, really, uh, these things would cover the first four chapters. He said, if thou put the, bra uh, put, uh, if thou put the brethren in, the, in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. But refuse profane and old wives fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercises, proper look. Now that word bodily exercise is not what you think it is. It has to do with exercising the flesh. It has to do with the flesh. Uh, people depending on the flesh. People perfecting the flesh. He says for bodily exercise, proper look. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, now watch it, who is the Savior of how many men? Is He the Savior of all men? Yes, he is, especially of those that walk, believe. I want you to notice in chapter, verse 8, for bodily exercise, profit to look, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Godliness having promise of the life that now is. And of that which is to come. And I will talk to you about that which is to come. The life that now is would be our position we have in it. The life that now is is Christ, is life. Godliness has to do with in Christ. Look back in chapter 3. In chapter 3, verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of, tru of the truth. What is the house of God? Now you hear preachers all the time talking about coming to God's house. And they're referred to the mortar, the brick, and the, the roof, and the building. But what in the context, what is the house of God? It's the church, isn't it? But the church of God is not in the building. The building is not the house of God. A house is somewhere he dwells. And he dwells not in houses made with hands. Folks, the church is the body of Christ. The house of God is the body of Christ. It's the building of God. He's building the building. Ye are His workmanship. Ye are His building. In fact, look, hang on to Timothy and turn back and look in, uh, go back to Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 1. Verse uh, 22, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. Then the church is his body. 
Look in chapter 2. In chapter 2, verse 19. Now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the buildings fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together in that temple for a habitation of God through the Spirit. The church is the building of God. He's building the building. It's the body of Christ. Turn back to 1 Corinthians and look in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. <coughs> Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 8. Now he that planteth, <coughs> and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's what? Building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. He is the chief architect. I have laid the foundation. Paul. Oh, and another buildeth their own. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Then Paul was the chief architect. He had the blueprint. God gave him the instruction. Just like Noah. Noah had the instructions of God to build an ark. Noah wasn't building that ark for the world to get in. Noah built that ark for the saving of his house and for animals. Well, what if you wanted, if you heard that the rain was a coming in Noah's day, what would you have done? You would have went to Noah and said, Noah, I, I believe what well, I want to. You'd build a boat like he was building. Not big, but you, you follow what I'm saying? You would have followed his instructions. And the world was condemned. But the point I want you to see is you're a building. Look back in verse, uh, First Timothy again. <clears throat> the church of the living God, verse 15. The pillar and ground of the truth, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Then the church is the godliness. The building is the godliness. Where is God's godliness? What is godliness? It's godlike. What in the world is like God? Now that's not a phrase. I'm, that's a question. What's in this world that's like God today? The church. The church is like God. It's the body of Christ. That's where godliness is at. He said the church uh, without the great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the spirit. Now he gives this as though it already happened because of the last few words in the verse. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, Believed on in the world, received up where? In the glory. You say that's Christ. Yes, it is Christ. But we're the body of Christ. What is said about Christ can be said about the church. That's the mystery. And Paul said in verse chapter 4, for bodily exercise. Uh, look at, well, yeah. Bodily answers of prophets look, but godliness is profitable unto all things. The church is profitable. Being in the body of Christ is profitable for all things in your life, in the life that you're living. Look what he said there. He said, the path and the promise of the life that now is. Well, what's that? Well, turn back to Galatians and look in Galatians. 
chapter 2. In Galatians chapter 2. You, you're in Christ. You're in the body of Christ. Well look at Galatians chapter 2. He said in verse 19. Well, let's read verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law, am dead to the law. In other words, the, the, through the law, the law condemned me. The law put me to death. For I, through the law, am dead to the law. When I died in Christ on that cross, the law put me to death. The law sentenced me, condemned me, put me to death. The penalty of sin, the wages of sin is death. The law said you got to die. I can't die, so I died in Christ. I threw the law, so when I died, I'm dead to the law. The law can't do no more to me than kill me. Look what he said, for I threw the law, I'm dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now watch it. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Folks, the life that I now live in the flesh, it's Christ liveth in me. I died by law being connected. I'm in the body of Christ. I'm alive unto God. Do y'all get the picture? <clears throat> if you're alive unto something, that's your main focus in life. Jesus Christ ought to be number one in your life. Everything you have, you have because of Him. The Bible says we live. In fact, I'm not even going to quote it. Turn back to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. And notice in Romans chapter 14. The life that now is, the life that we have in Christ, we're alive unto God, that we're dead to the law. We're, we died in A.D. 33. We're not condemned anymore. There's nothing to condemn you. Who is he that condemneth? It is that Christ died. There's nothing that can be brought against you. You don't have no marks against you as far as God's concerned. You're righteous. You're holy. You're the Son of God. You're godly. <coughs> so when I live godly, it don't make no difference. You're godly. Now what you do in the flesh, the deeds done in the old body. That's your work. And your work, you will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And your work <coughs> will be judged. Your sin, the sinner you are, has already been judged, found guilty, and condemned to death and died. You understand? You reckon yourself to be dead indeed on the sea. Why? You're dead as far as God is concerned and you're raised in Christ and as judicially speaking, you're uncondemned, you're free, you're righteous, you're holy in the eyes of God Almighty. But now your work is a different story. But look in Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Notice what he says there. Verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself. No man dieth to himself. Well, whether we live or what uh, we live unto the Lord, whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why doest thou set it not thy brother? 
For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, Every tongue shall confess to God, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You're going to stand there by yourself, Give an account of yourself unto your, as far as your labor goes. What you did for the Lord Jesus Christ as an ambassador for Him. But that's a different thing. I want you to go back to Timothy. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is. And that life has to do with being in Christ and Christ in you. And of that which is to come. There is a life that is to come. That's more important than the life you're living down here. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians and look in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're all aware of all men most miserable. Folks, there is life after you leave this planet. There is a life beyond this. And we're all going to face it. And I want to talk to you about the life that which is to come. Number one, it's eternal. You know, I'm not going to get eternal life. I already have eternal life. I have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Look in, and it's a gift. Look in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Very familiar. Nothing big about this. As simple as ABC. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Every gift has to be received. If you don't receive it, you'll never receive it. The life that now is is eternal. Look in, back in Timothy. Notice in 1 Timothy chapter 6. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, notice in verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on the eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Lay hold. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on it. Embrace it. Hold it dear to you. Eternal life whereunto thou art also called. God Almighty has called you to have eternal life. To eternal life. There is life to come. When you draw your last breath, you go to sleep in the Lord. When you wake up, it's eternity for you. It's like going to sleep at night and you go to sleep and you wake up this morning and it seemed like the night just flew by. When you, those that are sleeping the Lord, one day they're going to wake up. They are alive today. They're in the presence of Almighty God. They're waiting for the trumpet and one day they're going to rise and the resurrection, folks, they're going to rise and wake up and have enjoy the eternal life that they're wanting to have. Look at with me again. Notice in uh, verse there, 16. Let me go back and I'll read verse 15. He said there, gosh, I'd like to read. <laughs> There's so many verses, but... Uh, in his times, a reference to the latter part of verse 14, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that'll be 
there which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only, now watch it, who only hath immortality. Who, who has the immortality? Jesus Christ. How do you get eternal life? You have His eternal life. You know something, folks? There's people talking about once saved, always saved. So well, I believe that. I do too. You can't be saved from God's wrath but one time. <coughs> now you understand? When people talk about being saved multiple times, they're not talking about, they're talking about some religious experience that they have. Folks, when you're saved, when you trust Christ as your Savior, as your Savior, then you're saved from God's wrath. Whether it be hell, tribulation, everything, His, His attitude will never change toward you. Why? Because you, by one Spirit, are baptized into one body, that body being the household of God, that body being the church of the living God, that body being the body of Christ. You're sons of Almighty God, and you have His eternal life, and His attitude toward you will never be the same. He'll look at you as a son and not as a sinner you was. So well, I might sin. Y'all, I'm sure you will. <laughs> There's no perfect people within the walls, folks. I'm giving you that news flash, and I know that's going to break some of you's heart, but there ain't nobody sitting on these pews or standing behind this pulpit. That's perfect. But you are perfect in Christ. In that Jesus Christ took your penalty and bore the judgment and paid for your sins. Amen. Our eternal life is His who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see to whom be honor and glory and power everlasting. Amen. You know, he dwelleth in the light. Turn over, hang on to Tim. We're, we're going to come. Well, look over in 1 John. In 1 John. I'll show you that line. 1 John. Notice in verse. in verse uh, I'm going to read uh, verse 19 and we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness and we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true now watch it and we are in Him, that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Who is the true God and eternal life? Life. Jesus Christ. You know who that light is? I don't have time to go back in time, but... God is what? Light. And in Him is no darkness at all. God is a spirit. God is light. He is God. And He has only no immortality. He's the only one. <coughs> and if you're in Him, you have eternal life. Now, I'm going to stop there because I can't get through that next point. I don't want to. So, you're at liberty to go. Don't fall out.